I've never seen a waterfall plot this good before on any compression driver. Nothing has the internal damping characteristics that this driver exhibits. And everything kind of points to me as if maybe we found a new holy grail for a compression driver. All right, guys, we're back with a brand new broadcast. And today I have Matt Markham of Eminence Design. He is the senior design engineer at Eminence. And today we got something really cool because we have a new product. I have one actually right here. It's the Eminence. They call it the Tech Stream. It's the N314X. And this is the 8 ohm version of this driver. And you, you're you pretty excited about the advancements of this. And I'm actually really excited about this driver too. Can you tell us a little bit? about the texture and what, what makes this so much of a better compression driver than some of the other compression drivers out there? Well, it's, it's really the, the development in materials nowadays. If you compare uh, today's typical compression driver to uh, the initial patented device, and there's really not a huge difference in, in, in the way those, those things perform. Your your basic your, the most the most development in, in terms of compression drivers nowadays is really come in terms of material advancements and that's where the tech stream driver kind of shines. It's, it utilizes materials that people haven't really embraced yet, and it's a very unique material. It's not like anything that any other compression drivers utilized before. So that's kind of what I'd like to talk about today is is how unique this material is. And just exactly why uh, it's 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 really a, a good material for this this application. So this is the actual tech stream driver. It's a one and a half inch exit, right? 1. And 4, uh, yeah. oh, one point four. I'm sorry, one point four inch. And then the back. And you actually did a really good job engineering this. And I, I want to say this right off the bat because I thought this was kind of funny. I took this out of the package for the first time, and it came with a bag full of you know nuts and screws and everything that to the fasteners you know fasten it and it got stuck to this magnet yeah and i tried to take it off and it ripped the bag off and the nuts were on there and i was like oh my gosh it was so yeah. strong i couldn't even get the nuts off i had to like pry them off it was such a strong magnet it was pretty ex i was like yeah Holy and, cow. And that's just the stray flux you could imagine what the focused flux and the gap is this would, would feel like huh? oh yeah like inside yeah absolutely <laughs> i've got a a diaphragm assembly here if i can see if i can get it in the right light there for you oh yeah you can kind of see that that's the that's the pattern that you're that you're really playing with there it's i don't know if that's good lighting or not but oh yeah it looks nice so yeah so matt tell, tell us about this technology because my understanding is it sounds better than a titanium driver but has some of the benefits of a titanium as well. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, well, it's really subjective. Uh, we did some blind listening tests when we were developing this driver. We were actually comparing this driver to the titanium version that, that was already out, the N314T, if you will. Hmm. And the T version, it's not just your typical titanium compression driver either. It also has some kind of advancement advanced feature in it as well that most compression drivers don't have and that's the d3 technology what we've trademarked is d3 and that stands for damp diametric drive and basically what that is and i've got a diaphragm assembly here to try to illustrate that as well but i don't know if you can see this uh series of this array of radial stripes on the surround that are applied to yeah. the surround there Absolutely. Yeah, we can see those. Yeah. yeah, that's the D3 technology. Basically what that is, it's a, a robotically applied adhesive that's placed in a strategic position that uh, increases the transfer of energy from the voice coil to the dome. Uh, it also increases the, uh, the stiffness in the radial direction, uh, not so much the axial direction as the piston's going to move, but uh, the radial direction. It stiffens that to mention up. And the thirdly, one of the third and most beneficial things that the D3 technology does for the titanium driver is it, uh, it dampens the spurious resonances that are associated with those titanium or those metal dome materials. 
it's kind of like putting your finger on a bell, if you will. You can put your yeah. finger on the bell and the ringing stops. It goes away, so to speak. And that's that's the, probably the most significant benefit to the D3 technology. Yeah, because well, that's always the uh, the concern with a titanium-based uh, compression driver is the ringing that you're going to be getting with it. Absolutely, absolutely. And that ringing, it results. That results in distortion figures, um, uh, inaudibility, uh, unable to, you know, intelligibility, problems with intelligibility, and just the problems, they're, they're, they proliferate from there, basically. But that's so it. This is, it squashes oh, those, it's, sorry, it squashes those issues, so to speak. So, so you started with the D3 and you said, okay, this is going to be even better than our typical titanium. And you, right. you you know, you got that as good as you thought you could. And then you, you went up to the Eminence 314X, which you think is even a step above. And that's because you don't use titanium in this. You use a completely different material. And you call it the Textream material, right. correct? Yeah, it's a Textream material. It's basically a thin ply carbon uh, material. It's a... Think of it like a, a, a basket weave of, of really, really thin pieces of carbon just kind of woven in with each other and with a, an additional layer of that set on top of it, but oriented 90 degrees apart, so to speak. And so what makes the Textream so unique? Well, it's those material properties that we were talking about. All right, so this is what got us excited about the Textream material. We went to... Uh, an Alma show, now known as Alti. I don't know if you're familiar with Alti or not, but it's a trade show where like-minded folks of us in the industry get together to, to talk about cool stuff like this. <laughs> and uh, we met with a gentleman from a company called Oxion AB. It's based in Sweden, a gentleman by the name of Martin Turrison, who exposed us to some data for the, the material properties for this Techstream product that they're trying to sell. And immediately upon seeing the, the material properties that he shared with us, I knew right off the bat that this was the perfect application for that material. It basically has to do with the, the stiffness to weight ratio more than anything. And if you compare that, those parameters with other commonly used materials for compression drivers, you get these, uh, these, these different values. And one of the most important to kind of look at here is this acoustical figure of merit. Now that's essentially taking uh, the speed of sound of the material uh, divided by the density of the material and that gives you basically a, a, a number that you can uh, compare different materials to and basically the higher the number the, the more suitable that material is for high frequency applications. Gotcha. And so you can see beryllium is the acoustical figure of merit number of 6.92. It's off the charts, and it's kind of why it's often been referred to as somewhat as a holy grail for compression drivers, so to speak. And it's, it's because of that value right there. Now, you can see it if we look at that same value for titanium or aluminum, that those, those figures are nowhere near... The, the performance of beryllium. But the texturing material, it's a huge factor, a step above those titanium and aluminum, those, those other common materials. It may not be quite to the borderline of the performance in that terms of performance in, in with beryllium, but beryllium also doesn't have the uh, internal damping characteristics that this material also has, which is something else that we'll get into so not only does it easily beat titanium and aluminum compression drivers as far as the acoustical figure of merit, but it's it's creeping up there towards the CVD diamond and the beryllium. And one of the, the issues with beryllium as well is the cost associated with it. So uh, a typical 1.4 inch beryllium driver can cost easily $900. And right. uh, we're talking about this, and I think that's important to note because when we talk about the this we're talking about three hundred and fifty dollars and something that we're going to get to a little bit later we're not going to get to right now is the uh, ability for this to cross over low and be used with some big woofers in a two-way style system which is one of the things that makes me so excited especially at its price point but i want to still talk more about its acoustical properties first because i think you know it doesn't matter if it can cross over good uh, low if it doesn't sound good i mean right 
right. And yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where we went next. And we got these values on paper and they look great. Right. But mm, yeah. we need to validate that before we could get too far into spending money on this stuff. We need to know if these if these numbers are legit. So we got samples of the, the material, just raw sheets of, of the text stream material. And what we did was uh, we cut reads from it and like we often do with titanium material we make reads that we load into a little homemade read tester which i'll also share an image of with you <clears throat> excuse me and so yeah there's our little read tester there so we cut uh little strips of, of this material and we clamp it in, into this fixture here and this fixture is it, it's attached to a voice coil and you can see the little spider down there at the bottom that the fixture sits in okay and yeah. we're able to drive this this fixture with you know a harmonica sinusoidal input and um, measure basically where the first bending mode frequency is of the material so we we sweep uh, the, the signal through that voice coil until we find uh, with using the laser there that you can probably see in the in the picture there wherever maximum displacement first occurs uh, that's the first bending mode frequency okay gotcha. and so we, we that's that's one bit of data that we get we use that data and compare it to um, the same uh, evaluation of so the titanium material to cut a titanium read of the same uh, same dimensional parameters as the text stream read, place it in the same clamp, and we find the the frequency at which its first bending mode excitation occurs. We, okay, so we've got the, uh, the we've got the first bending mode frequency uh, for the text stream material, and we've also got the frequency for the titanium read material. Okay, now so for each of those uh, read tests, we it excited those reads with their um, natural frequency, with the natural harmonic frequency. We hit them with that excitation. Then we remove that stimulus and try to see how long it takes that excitation to decay. See how long it takes that read to stop ringing once the signal's removed from it. So we're talking about waterfall graph then? Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. A simplified form of 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 a water of a waterfall plot, essentially. Got you. Because that's that's something I feel like uh, a lot of people don't talk about when they talk about sound quality of, especially compression drivers. You know, mm -hmm. how fast can it start and how fast can it stop, and that makes a big difference on the sound quality. Exactly, especially in regards to intelligibility, because if something continues to rain. Uh, it's not producing the next signal that it was sent to if it's still producing the previous one that it, it, it's still you know oscillating in the system so to speak and so here is a perfect example that we have of the uh, titanium and uh, of, of the of the titanium oscillation being removed now this is the yellow signal you can see the yellow signal was the input uh, driving the read uh, the green signal is the laser measuring the displacement of the read. And so you can see that when the yellow signal stops, when the signal is, is not sent to the read anymore, that titanium read, it continues to undulate for, say, five seconds. And each one of these divisions is one second. So you've got that titanium read continuing to rain for, a good five seconds once the stimulus is removed. Oh, wow. Right. So we look at the same measurement for the text stream, and it's really hard to see. The, the, the yellow stimula, stimulus is removed, and almost instantly the text stream material decays to within two and a half seconds, uh, less than half the time the titanium material took to decay and it, does it so there also seem to be an intensity 
that was larger with the titanium versus the tech stream. Is that correct? That is correct. I'm glad you noticed that because if we look at the previous slide, the amplitude for, for the yellow portion was much less. That's because it took uh, the, the titanium material that we use for that dome is a uh, 1.1 mil thickness. Uh, the thickness of the, the tech stream material is 3.4 mils thick. And so the titanium uh, has a lot more displacement uh, with less input signal. The, the titanium material moved a lot more than the tech stream material does with the same given input, excitation input. So we had to reduce the excitation input so the displacement values would be the same. That uh, kind of brings us to the next thing that we're talking about. What does all this mean? How and what does this what does this do for us? We're talking about things in terms of intelligibility. It's all about cumulative spectral decay or those waterfall plots that you mentioned. And here are some typical waterfall plots that you can see of compression drivers that would use an aluminum diaphragm versus a beryllium material. So you could see how that beryllium offers a much better performance in that regard than, than aluminum material does. And all of that aluminum material actually is, is even better than titanium is in this regard. But even though as it may be the beryllium material, it's not perfect. We can still see that low frequency ringing uh, occurring for a good five milliseconds, you know, beyond the excitation for the beryllium material. Now, <clears throat> we sent the N314X drivers to Voice Coil Magazine, and they did their own independent analysis of the driver, which they uh, they released in, in one, of the, one of the issues that you can probably look up if you want to. The cumulative spectral decay that they measured for the N314X. Now, I've never seen a waterfall plot this good before on any compression driver, be it a coax compression driver, uh, mylar type diaphragms, whatever you name it, nothing has the internal damping characteristics that this driver exhibits. I've never seen anything decay in one millisecond, you know, from 1K up. That's just, that's, that's unheard of. And we see the little slight bit of ringing taking place here around 700 or 800 hertz where it takes you know along the lines of 2.3 milliseconds to decay that's actually the horn itself the the horn itself is it's a cast aluminum horn and it resonates if you flick the edge of it it'll resonate around 700 to 800 hertz so if that horn's clamped into a baffle uh, that ring essentially disappears as well and uh <laughs> I'd love to see something that outperforms this CSD right here. Yeah, I've never seen one nearly as good. Now, let's just for the people that may not understand the CSD, can you explain um, what a typical CSD would look like? Typically, we're going to see a, a lot of these peaks are going to go further down at the bottom where that dark blue is, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. that's talking about how fast the response stops and restarts and replays correct correct that's so correct. what we're talking about and that's why you're talking about how the text stream material has the ability to be more intelligible than some of the other drivers because when the music stops the driver stops within one millisecond for almost the entire frequency range Correct. Yeah. And so you compare that to some of your typical cumulative spectral decays for a beryllium driver or, or an aluminum dome driver. There's there's really no comparison when it comes to intelligibility. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at like at two kilohertz on the beryllium. We're looking still at five milliseconds and it's and it's continuing. We don't know exactly where it's stopping. We just know it's still ringing at five milliseconds and the aluminum we're singing ringing at uh, 10 kilohertz look up to five milliseconds and then you know one kilohertz and down we're also seeing that as well right yeah so I mean, everything kind of points to me as if maybe we found a new holy grail for compression driver 
materials. You know, the beryllium might have been displaced now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's really impressive. And you guys came out with this like about what was this been about a year on the market or so? Oh, I think we first released it in 2019. It's oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, during COVID, that's kind why. Of threw a wrench in everything, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we yeah. were the first to implement it in this application anyway. I think there's some woofers and stuff out there that that the material was implemented in first. But I think this is the very first compression driver that anybody's used this in. So, Matt, what I think is really exciting about this particular implementation of your Techstream is the... Uh, uh, the low frequency response of this. So a lot of compression drivers that I've had, you know, 1500 Hertz is about max, especially when we start taking a ringing and everything else into consideration. Uh, but this we were looking at, and when you uh, pair it with the horn that you have made specifically for this driver, uh, which is an aluminum horn, and I'll make sure to link that down in the description, this can go all the way down to 700 Hertz. And you, I, I mean, that's, a, that is nearing the price uh, that's nearing the performance of what a lot of people are going towards compression coaxials but at half the cost i mean this thing's only about 350 dollars. so supposedly yeah. this has better ring better waterfall characteristics in a compression coaxial can cross over just about as low and is half the price and the horn is up oh, go ahead i'm sorry no, no, I mean, you, you've hit it right there. I mean, we can show you graphs where you've got more bottom end extension with this and not just that, but you've also got more top end extension thanks to the material properties of the tech stream. And it's, it's a win-win on both ends. Usually you're sacrificing one end to get more of the other, but with this mm. one, there there's essentially is no sacrifice. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that impressed me, and this is what I said to some of my patrons, we were talking behind the scenes about this driver. And I said, well, look, this, this driver is $350, which a lot of people might say, well, that's kind of expensive. But when we look at the performance, it's really a good price. Because what I say is a compression coaxial, which will get down, it might go down to 500, or it might, you might, you might get a couple hundred more Hertz out of it, but not much. And you're looking at probably six, $700 for a, a good compression coaxial. And then you look at the horn. And so one of your famous competitors, I'm not gonna mention their name on there, uh, has a horn for the compression coaxial, it's $300. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a thousand dollars to set up, to go down pretty much as low as this. Now this is $350. You take a look at the horn, the horn is $70. You're at $420. You can buy two of these before you even equate to one compression coaxial. Hmm. Right, yeah. Yeah, when you look at it as a, a total system cost, you know, uh, wow, the, the, in terms of value, I don't know that it gets any better than that, really. And that's kind of what Eminence has always been about, too. And we're, the, our uh, company motto is quality, value, and service to meet our customers' needs. And that's, that's what we believe in. I want to end on this. So this Eminence driver, where do you see this being used at? Well, I'd like for it to start be finding its way into more touring applications because mm. um, uh, as far as the reliability of it, you, that's something else that we haven't actually mentioned much about is with this texturing material, looking at metal dome diaphragms, compression drivers, uh, metal domes work hardened, they fatigue, they become brittle and they shatter, okay? And this happens even faster, the lower in frequency that you use them with. Uh, that's not the case with the texturing material. I can't make one of these shatter. We keep pushing these things as hard as we can. We get them to handle up to 150 watts, and then the adhesives start failing. The dome doesn't fail. So, wow. yeah, in terms of reliability, so you know, now you've got advantages in intelligibility and reliability in addition to cost. Show me a better value, man. I, I don't. I haven't found one yet, and certainly don't see anything with that kind of CSD graph. So I always go back to that: the value in the CSD graph. You can't be beat. Uh, one of the places where I think this would be really good as well is a lot of people are trying to do uh, home theater applications where they're trying to do two ways or three ways with big woofers, so 15, 18 inch woofers. 
and they want to get that big sound stage. And, and sometimes they're even doing MTMs, right? Like a, a woofer on top, a woofer on bottom, and this. And where this can cross over, you could easily do a nice MTM style configuration, get your very wide sound stage with two 15s and cross over something like this. And that would be a really unique uh, home theater speaker. I'm going to go ahead and give a spoiler alert. I'm going to be building some home theater speakers with these. So if you want to watch that, you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I think these might, these have the potential to be probably the best home theater speaker I've ever built. So I'm actually really interested and excited about that. Go on ahead and drop it, Nick. Tell them about it. Well, I just did. All right, we're doing it. <laughs> well, well, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this because you guys don't know what woofer we're using. I'm not going to tell you all the details on the woofer. You guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. But I'm going to tell you this: it is a brand new woofer that Eminence just came out with that they are very excited about. And honestly, I got some on, uh, got some in, and I've taken a look at it, and they are very nicely made. And I think you guys are going to be really, really interested on these. I actually had to wait for them because they didn't have the stickers yet. <laughs> Yeah, the back plate labels. Yeah, Jerry's like, I don't have any stickers. Hold on. I can't yeah. send them to you. He said, all right. Yeah, uh, we, we haven't made, made the first uh, first production run of these yet. So th th this, this, this build is going to be amazing. And, and, and I, you know, I'm going to be using it for home theater. But by the way, the, the CSD looks for this, and I haven't tested the woofer out yet. I think that although I'm going to be using this for home theater, it's going to be a really great two way for someone that wants it for two way uh, music listening as well. Um, and, and where I, I could see this also as uh, Klipsch makes a lot of great um, speakers that people love and like a Cornwall. And I think that this would also make a really good one of those style speakers in a two way setup with a 15 inch woofer. Um, especially actually the one that you sent, I think would be a really good setup. And you would do away with the complexity of the three-way driver system where you don't have to have nearly as many crossover components as you do typically. And then you also have the ability of still getting that high end and that mid-range and still being able to cross over that 15-inch woofer. In fact, when I was doing my research, the Klipsch has to cross over at like 1.5 kilohertz. You could cross over this at 700. You would get actually a much better off-axis response. So in my opinion, this actually has the ability for some really great two-way high-end hi-fi style systems if people want to go that route. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things that I have a lot, hard time with a lot of speakers, and I'm sure you know this too, is rock music, right? Because mm. oh, it's... Yeah. It, that's so many things going on at once. And if there's a lot of that waterfall graph, that's not that that's continuing, then it becomes muddy and un, unintelligible. I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's one of the exact reasons we have to use a couple of rock tracks when we do our AB listening tests on stuff is because you got to see if, if the, if the waters are muddied or not. And you can't really do that unless you've got content that, that can do that for you. Yeah. Did you, did you, I'm curious, how did this do on rock? Oh, it's, it's phenomenal on rock. It's, uh, it, it excels at rock in to me because of the guitar, the guitar cuts through it so cleanly. You're not, uh, one of the songs that we listened to it through, uh, when we were doing our testing, it's an in excess song. And, uh, there's a guitar yeah. riff in there that, uh, if you don't have a very intelligible speaker, just that one riff alone is is not easily understood. It's not easy to make out. But when you hear that with this speaker, we were hearing stuff in songs with this speaker that we didn't even know were it actually in the content. You know, it's yes. Stupid. Like wow, that, I had never heard that before. You know, I know that there's been times where I've also thought a recording was bad right i'm like oh this recording's bad because i've listened to it it sounds awful and then i listen to it on a good set of speakers and i'm like nope it's not the recording <laughs> <laughs> but matt i really appreciate you uh taking your time with us today thank you so much uh, for doing that and uh, letting us know a little bit more about your tech stream drivers 
Now these are available straight from you guys. Parts Express also carries them. Is there anywhere else that you guys really carry these that you'd like to let them know about? Uh, well, you can find the list of our distributors on our website. And from there, it's it's whatever your preference is. Lo most local, you can sort distributors, dealers by locality, whatever, whatever you're most comfortable with. And just find our product and have fun with it. And I will tell you this too, if you get it from Parts Express, there's a 5% off coupon code down below. So save yourself even more money. Get get, get even more for your money. Yeah. Heck All yeah. right, guys. Awesome. This is thank toy you, Nate. Thanks for everything you do. I really appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it too. Yeah, All right, guys. Enjoy your videos. <laughs> We're out.